Greetings, everyone. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad that you are here. Uh, today's nonsense is in historic, and folks, we're trying to play with Shalai, Voice of Plenty. You, planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control, have hexproof, folks. Uh, I've played with this card before on the channel, and I've always loved it. Uh, the idea is we get down to Shalai, and we just have other individually very powerful cards that can happen around it that make it so your opponent just struggles to win because they can't even use their removal effectively because they've got to they've got to remove Shalai first and then they've got these other things that are really tough to deal with. What are those other things? Well, um, Tenacious Pup makes any of our mid-game threats very, very powerful. Uh, Luminar Casperin being one of them, just tossing counters around all the time. If you can't remove the two Luminar Casperin, it gets out of control, right? Uh, Restoration of Ganjo, it flips over into a Brimaz style creature, a 3-4 Vigilance that whenever it attacks or blocks creates a 1-1. Uh, the Skyclave Apparitions, where we're just able to exile with impunity, uh, Ranger class growing our stuff. Uh, Ronas, the Indomitable, is Death Touch and Destructible, as long as we're throwing counters around and all kind of stuff. Uh, our creatures easily can make it to 4 Toughness, right? Or 4 Power, so it can attack and block. And then, uh, you know, just like Toski to draw cards at the top end, there's Elder Gargaroth and Nissas and just generic, uh, generically really powerful things. So, honestly, uh, I'm really looking forward to the game. So, let's see if we can play some, huh? All right, folks. Here we are up against TNT. Good luck, TNT. And no, I don't think we can keep that hand. This hand is also not great, but I think we are going to keep it. Send back a Plains... And hang on for dear life here. All right, Temple Garden tapped. Go on ahead. One goes to Cave of the Frost Dragon. All right, well, we're going to go with another Temple Garden tapped and pass the turn right on back, TNT. Arch of Araska and rest in peace. Well, folks, that's not something we're worried about. So, Restoration of Iganjo. Going to seek us up a basic planes. That's the one. And pass turn right on back to TNT. Well, we're going to discard a Luminarch Aspirant. Oh, shoot, folks. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Uh, all right. So, shall I? Uh, folks, we're used to being able to put that right out of the battlefield. I did not even think about that rest in peace being in play. That was not crisp play there. I was kind of goofing up. Uh, so, what I think we are going to do is Skyclave Apparition, get rid of the rest in peace so that we can uh, take advantage of this restoration of a ganjo. Opponent kind of stuck on mana a little bit here. That was uh, unfortunate for them, for sure. Well, alright, so basic planes, play it. And a Luminar Casperant. Going to charge in for a lot. And we are going to be representing lethal here, I think. Sure enough, folks. Sure enough. Apparently, these things happen to more than just me. <laughs> Sorry about that, TNT. It happens. It happens. All right, folks. You are up against Devoid Lang. And yeah, I think we're going to hang out of this. Uh... And I'm going to start on Temple Garden untapped into Tenacious P. Uh, it's true we could branch off pathway, but we also have double white spells in our deck, some settler wreckages, things like that. So I would really rather wait to play this to see which one we need more of, right? Because currently in our hand, we want double green, but there's no guarantee that's the best play. All right, opponent going to duress. Going to take that ranger class for sure. Uh, opponent does. And there it is. Okay, so that solves some of our problems. Tenacious P going to pop a counter over onto Luminarch Aspirant. Luminarch Aspirant going to share the love over onto Tenacious P. Just to make sure that, you know, even if they have some damage-based removal or something for uh, Luminarch Aspirant, we get a little bit of board presence. We can still continue to attack. Evolving Wilds gets cracked. I assume that means our opponent's on some kind of red-black uh, variant of sacrifice. Oh, boy. Duress takes our Nissa Vital Force. Okay. Well, man, these things happen. 
Uh, we have nothing better to do, but we will slam in, slam in. The counter goes on Luminarch Aspirant. And opponent goes with Ike or Wellspring to draw a card. And slams Temple of Silence to Scry. Oh boy, this has got to be some kind of Grease Fang. Something or other, right? Because they're in the Mardu colors, they're doing artifacty stuff. I think it's just an awkward situation, right? Uh, we are going to put the counter over here just in case they have, like, damage-based board sweepers, anger the gods, stuff like that. Uh, and this does block, you know, theoretically. Not Parhelions or anything, you know? Uh, but it does block. Thrilling Discovery, it is. Graveyard-based. Okay. Needle Verge Pathway untapped into Goblin Engineer. Opponent goes to find an artifact. It's a Parhelion. It is a Parhelion. Okay. Well, land. Attack. Opponent blocks some of the damage. Not all of the damage. And the counter going over onto... Yeah, I guess onto itself still. Uh... Folks, we are terrified that they have a Grease Fang. Sure enough. They've always got it, folks. They've always got it. All right. Yeah. Our Helion doing its thing. We drop to seven. And opponent has a Duress. Can't take anything. And Par Helion goes back to hand. A Ganjo, huh? Well, combat. Get in. Opponent. Blocks. Blocks. Well, if that's the blocks, folks, we got them. Oh, my goodness. I did not think we were going to get that one. Good heavens. All right. Well, I will take it. Because, uh, man, when they've just got the Grease Fang into the Parhelion, it's just like... Feels so tough, you know? Especially, we do have, you know, uh, four settler wreckages and stuff in the deck to, to combat this stuff, right? Um, so, you know, not seeing their correct cards at the correct times and all that, always frustrating when they do, you know? But, oh well. Oh well, we got the win, so can't complain. All right, folks, we're up against Dumbledore, and yeah, we're going to hang on to this. I think it's a fine hand. I'm going to start on Temple Garden tapped. Pass turn. See what our opponent has to say. It will be Castle Ardenvale next. Opponent starts on Speaker of Heavens. Not ideal. Opponent clearly on life gainy stuff. Foretells. All right. Interesting. Yeah, let's, I guess, just go with Illuminar Casper. It's going to get a counter. It's going to prevent the opponent from doing their Speaker of Heaven stuff unless they commit more to the board. Committing more to the board means we could potentially Skyclave Apparition or Toski. Depending. I assume this is Doomscar. So maybe they want to just fire off the Doomscar early to so that they can finish setting up their board. Right of Oblivions? Wow. Alright, well, fine. Shall I, then? Come on down. Uh, of course, we don't want to Toski while the Rite of Oblivion's hanging out there. That would be... So, opponent has Vengeful Reaper. All right. Well, let's Skyclave Apparition. Eat the Vengeful Reaper. Do combat. Hit our opponent for three. Tenacious P. Throw up a gain life and toss some counters down. We're going to be able to get Toski doing those things here shortly. Interesting. Well, all right. I guess I wanted to get Toski with the, the counters here, but I need to get Shalai growing because these angels are problematic. Cosmos Elixir. Drink it till you burst. Cosmos Elixir. It's best for what is worse. All right. Well, we're going to block. Opponent. Rampage of the Valkyries. 
I'm going to make a sacrifice to Nacious Pop. You got it. Cosmos Elixir gains our opponent to life. Does a little bit of scrying. Goes bottom. All right, Settle the Wreckage is the card that we see next. But we're going to Toski this turn and charge in for a good solid chunk of damage. And draw three cards, refilling our hand quite nicely, actually. Land makes the battlefield counter going on Toski. Of course, it's the indestructible one. And Rite of Oblivion is a heck of a magic card. But it does have its downsides. Opponent gains a couple of life. Can do a little bit of scrying. Sure enough. Restoration of Iganjo, eh? Well, that's a good one. But I think we're just going to hang on to what we've got here because we're going to fill our hand... And our opponent's right up against it. So land. We just... Oh, you know what? If we Luminarch Aspirant here, we get to toss two counters over on Toski. Toski is indestructible and individually lethal. Uh, I guess that's not true because there's Cosmos Elixir going to be doing those things. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, this is fine, then. Water goes top, top. Gains some life. Does a little scrying. Sure. But that doesn't matter, folks, because we're just going to not BM at all and charge in. Our opponent can block the Toski. But it don't matter. We got you, Dumbledore. We got you. GG, though. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. That was a wild ride. We had uh, we had a good time. I will admit. <clears throat> you might even see I was a little salty in the games. And by a little salty, I mean grotesquely, overbearingly, insanely salty. And why, might you ask? I'm playing a deck that I love. I'm playing in a color, color combination I love. I'm doing things that I love. Why on earth would I ever be salty? Well, folks, uh, I was playing this deck for quite a while and had several really good wins. I try and record games that you're gonna be interested in watching as often as possible, right? Had several good wins. One where I settled the wreckage and Elves player right out of the game, had a really close back and forth win against Mono Red that was really grindy and really sick. They had a turn three or turn four Embercleave. I think it was a turn three Embercleave and we still won absolutely wild stuff. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. You would have loved it. And I wasn't recording the entire time. I was so upset. <laughs> I was so upset. So I have to go back and re-record all this stuff. I have no idea how that happened. Um, my best guess is, you know, I'm on a multi-monitor setup, so sometimes when you click uh, to the other screen, it's like you're clicking out of this program and you're clicking into a new program. So sometimes you have to click again, right? My best guess is I did not click again. And the recording never started. So then I still recorded quite a few more games. Honestly, the deck was really good. Um, it, it won like about 60% of its games. Um, we had a couple of non-games. There was a like a Shrines deck where we had them, I feel like, right on the ropes. Never got to the third mana. Like it was that close with only two mana, you know. Um, and then... At least I felt like if we had gotten to the third, you know, we would have had the game. But you never know, right? Uh, and then, you know, there was like uh, a loss to the Parhelion combo. But then we got our Vengeance won again uh, against the Parhelion combo. Uh, some Just some really, really sweet matchups, honestly, folks. Uh, what things might I do differently? Well, in a previous version of this deck, I did utilize... Um, the uh, three-man enchantment that doubles up counters every turn. Uh, uh, Hydra thing. Uh, Hydra's growth, yes. So it was. it's a little bit meany. Honestly, I think it's kind of good here, but only good if you have Shalai. Currently, we're only running three and one Restoration uh, Angel. Similar ideas here. Uh, uh, it's quite possible you want the fourth anyway. We don't really want to be bouncing things that have counters on them, you know. Or, uh, I'm sorry, blinking things I've counted on. But uh, as long as you have Shalai out, Hydra's Growth is actually sick, right? 
putting it on some small insignificant thing like Tenacious P and just having it grow out of control is wild, right? Uh, particularly putting it on something where Tenacious P has thrown a Trample and Vigilant Counter on, to, on it is crazy. So that might be something you fool around with. Um, another thing you might uh, consider doing is maybe just being a little more low to the ground. Take out the Hydra's Gro or Nissa, take out the Gargaross, and just go more down here. Maybe a couple more one drops or something like that, just for uh, uh, keeping it low to the ground so you can make sure you always command it and stuff like that, right? But honestly, the deck was great. I really can't complain as much as I want to because, oh my gosh, I was so tilted after not having the recording going. But that really isn't that the, the deck's fault at all. It's entirely my fault. You know how it is. But uh, uh, thank you all for watching this far. Uh, I really appreciate you. Uh, it, it definitely means the world when you folks consume the content. And I will uh, try and keep pumping it out. So you folks have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you next time.